Good morning. Welcome to our celebration. Today we pray for the repose of the soul of Dolores Conklin, whom this Mass is being offered. Let us begin this prayer as we begin all prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shall, shall Manasseh, king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years? In the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria settling them in Hala, at the harbor, a river of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord, their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rites of the nations whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, give up your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law which I enjoined on your fathers, and which I sent you by my servants the prophets, they did not listen, but were as stiff-necked as their fathers, who had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenants, which he had made with their fathers, and the warning which he had given them, till, in his great anger against Israel, the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. The Word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. O oh God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. Help us with your right hand, O oh Lord, and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. Help us with your right hand, O oh Lord, and answer us. Have not you, O oh God, rejected us, so that you go not forth, O oh God, with our armies? Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice a splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let, remove, let me remove the splinter from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. I just saw on the news uh, a couple days ago about how um, protesters have 
have pulled down the, the statue of St. Sarah um, in LA. And it breaks my heart. You know, it breaks my heart because there's so much anger and hate and and I I know Saint Sarah was not perfect. I know that he did wrong and and I, I pray that he didn't do it on purpose. I pray that, you know, we all make mistakes and, and that we all have failures in our, our lives. And so I don't judge him, especially because he has been made a saint and he is in heaven praying for us. And imagine what he is seeing right now as he looks down. In our gospel today, it talks about judging. And I, I just feel like this, this generation, our culture right now is, is in this, this cancel culture. Um, Father Tim talks about it, and I was talking to Francis Cabildo about it just um, you know, the other day. And it's how this culture is like, if anyone makes a mistake, you're done. That's it. I write you off. I dismiss you. You are dead to me. And so when we cancel someone, you know, because they made a mistake, we just go, okay, you're gone. We don't, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, you're not a good person. Imagine if all of us were judged that way. Imagine if you made a mistake ever and you would be canceled, that no one would give you another chance, no one would forgive you, no one would, would, would even you know, come close to you if you made a mistake. Um, just recently, uh, someone, I, I think a journalist, had searched Domino's Pizza's tweets and, or something and they pulled up something from 2012. They found uh, Dom that Domino's Pizza had, had complimented this person uh, that worked for them because they were a great worker. Uh, not knowing that, you know, in eight years, I guess they did something that this person didn't like eight years later in 2020, you know? And so uh, this, this journalist said, no one eat Domino's Pizza because in 2012, they, they actually complimented somebody, some, somebody that did something bad in 2020. Does that even make sense? Really? That, that you would judge somebody for something in the past. Again, in that past, it had nothing to do with what's happening now. It, it's exhausting. Judging in this world has, has gone to an extent that I, I can't understand. But imagine if God judged us in the same way. Imagine if on a day when, when God calls us back home uh, to himself and, he's, and he opens up the book and he's looking, he goes, oh, Dewey, you did great. Oh my gosh, the second half of your life, you were, you, you were wonderful and you helped so many people. But, but in high school or in, and in college, you weren't that good. So I can't let you in. Even though you did all this good stuff, even though you repented, even though you changed your life, it doesn't matter because what you did in the past is, is, what, is what matters. It's the only thing that matters because you made a mistake before, because you failed before. Imagine, imagine our lives being judged in that way. But yet that's how we're judging right now. Because we're calling, looking at every, like scouring histories of people to find something that's bad and so that we can dismiss whatever they say now. My brothers and sisters, it's a time not to judge, but time to forgive, time for compassion and understanding, a time to love one another. I don't care what you did. I, in confession, God gives it all up. God takes it all away. You are a child of God and you are loved and you can redeem yourself oh, through Jesus Christ. You can change. You have hope in all things. All of us have made mistakes and all of us have a chance to change and be better. Let us believe in that in yourself and believe that for others as well. So let us lift up our prayers now, my brothers and sisters, to a God who loves us, who continues to, to give of himself to us even when we turn against him. Even when we hurt Jesus, he still loves us. So let us pray, uh, bring our prayers and petitions to him. Let us pray for all religious leaders, for our Pope, for our bishops, uh, for all religious, that they continue to help guide this world into a place of compassion, mercy, and love, the mercy that Jesus gives to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of our civil leaders, for our president, for our governor, that we may teach 
understanding, love, and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of our families that we may forgive each other, that we may support each other, that we may hope for everyone's growth and change for the better. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the sick and the dying, that they may be healed in the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Dolores Conklin, that they may see God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, gracious God, we give you thanks for all your many blessings, for your forgiveness, for your love. Please answer these prayers if they are according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Who are the earth work of human hands that become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, through the vine work of human hands and become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and answered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas Todd, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially Dolores Conklin and Nail. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, San Francisco Solano, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. At this time, let us pray our prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Have a wonderful day.